So hello everyone. Now we are coming to the part three of the Gaussian loop flow. So if you had not seen part one and two, you can always uh, go back and then look at the other two parts and then come to part three. However, part three is actually it's on on its own. It's a standalone thing. It's a, it's it's the basic the actual theory of you know what is Gaussian loop flow. So far, whatever we have seen before were two examples to familiarize you with the method of Gaussian. But then the actual derivation of Gaussian, all these things happens in this video that is part three. So, so in a way, even if you directly jump to part three and then look at this video, you will still be able to uh, understand what is uh, Gaussian method, what we are trying to do it uh, through the derivations and through the formulas and all. But then I strongly recommend you to go back and look at part one and part two in the playlist of this video. Okay, let's get to part three. That is, uh, you 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 are you are already aware of this. I is y bus into v. So several times we had uh, seen this uh, expression before, and we 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 also know this is nothing but current injection vector. The size of this is n cross one. So if you have an n bus system, you have this n cross one. This is your bus admittance matrix, and this is nothing but the voltage vector. Vector of uh, complex voltages of your n bus system. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's expand it and write it out. So we are just trying to play with this. So I have i one. I two and so on. I k may be a general k row, and then I n is the total last element in that. So then I have y one one, y one two, and so on, up to y one n. Similarly, y two one, y two two, so on, up to y two n. Similarly, I have y k one. Y k two, so on up to Y k n, and again so on up to Y k n. I'm sorry, Y n throw first column, Y n throw second column, and so on up to Y n throw nth column. And then this is multi multiplying with V one, V two, so on up to V k, so on up to V n. So I've not done anything complicated, just Simply expanded it, and once you expand it, then now you have this uh, k row. So just I want to write down what is a k row. So i k is equal to v k one into v one, v k two into v two, and so on. So you have i k equal to y k one into v one. Plus y k two into v two, plus and so on y k k into v k, plus and so on y k n into v n. It's a simple uh, expansion. So nothing, nothing complicated here. Also, again, I hope you had followed how to do this. Now, next step is. I am just trying to write in a simpler notation. So, what is I k? Summation of y k i v i. So, where i equal to one to n. Just writing it in the compact form. Now, also, if you look at bus k and there is a Load at bus k called S k. So, what is the definition of I k? So, I k is current injected into bus k. So, into and all these things is indicating that the current direction is like this. This is I k, whereas the voltage here is V k and this complex power is S k. So, again, you know these three are related. So you know, if I do S K by V K,
then I'll get or let me let me write it in the other way sk is nothing but vk into ik conjugate but then because the current is going into the bus actually I should take a minus sign here so that's what I wanted to show it here now uh, what is ik ik conjugate is nothing but sk by minus vk or in other words ik is nothing but minus of sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate so basically i wanted to get this part actually so now this is here i can equate it this one minus of sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate so now from this i can write something like this minus of sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate is equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n yki vi so now i have now i want to apply the gauss seidel method so if i expand it so there will be one term here ykk and vk so that is what i want to keep it here everything else i want to bring it to the other side so i'll get ykk vk from this summation is equal to minus sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate and then minus of i equal to 1 to n yki vi and i not equal to k so just that one term will not come into picture and finally i will get vk equal to minus of sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate and then minus of so i think this all will be divided by 1 by ykk so yki vi i equal to 1 to n i not equal to k so i hope those who are kind of familiar with mathematical notations are able to follow this this is nothing but gauss seidel equation in fact if you look at video 2 it's exactly the same thing we have done in video 2 so this gauss seidel equation will work as long as you have the right hand side to be known sometimes you don't know the load at the bus because there is a generator at the bus so then what to do so like that there is some problem so before uh, addressing the case uh, let's uh, take one example so what i'll do now is uh, just go back couple of steps and then take look at this equation so from this equation i am interested to know what is the value of sk so earlier i was interested in knowing what is the value of vk so that's why i have written vk equal to something but now i am interested to know what is the value of sk so how do i get it so i'll just make a copy of this so minus of sk conjugate divided by vk conjugate equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n yki vi so this is what is uh, exactly this equation from here i went this path and from here i went here so i got gauss seidel equation now i have i am taking another different route now so now what i will do is write like this minus sk conjugate equal to vk conjugate multiplied by i equal to 1 to n yki vi this is also equal to i equal to 1 to n vki vi vk because vk is a constant so i can just take it into the summation so like this now what is sk conjugate minus so minus of pk minus jqk right 
because conjugate is there, I am getting minus jq. Okay? But then there is the overall minus sign outside also. So just uh, keep a note of it. Now on the other side, what we have is uh, we have this term. So this, this is a complex number, this is a complex number and this is also a complex number. So I will write it in the complex form. I will write it in the polar form. So this is so writing in polar form. So i equal to 1 to n. I will write it in polar form. So y k i magnitude, v i magnitude and v k magnitude. I will take the magnitude and multiply all of them and then the angle. So whatever angle of this ki is called theta ki and angle of vi is plus delta i. So because when we multiply the magnitudes will multiply and the angles will add. So whereas because the conjugate is there minus delta k. This is what is the polar form of uh, writing it. So there is a small problem here. The problem is uh, that of convention. Actually, this is this is all okay. This is minus p k and uh, plus j q k, or maybe let me just go ahead with it. Is uh, again this thing. Theta k i plus delta i minus delta k. So on the right side we have a polar form. So polar form I know how to convert, how to get the real value and uh, imaginary value. So I can directly write p k equal to. So minus of p k equal to. So what is that? So y k i v i v k cos of theta k i plus delta i minus delta k. So this is the actual value of what is p k. So here this is this is a magnitude, this is a magnitude, this is a magnitude. Nothing is a complex number. This entire thing is a real equation, not a complex equation. Similarly, I can write what is QK. So there is a J here. So when I use a sign, the J will also come, the J will cancel out. So I'll simply write QK equal to. So QK is nothing but this entire thing, YKI, VI, VK, sine of theta KI plus delta I minus delta K. That's it. So this is this is the value of QK. Uh, this is also not a complex equation, so we will be using this in our uh, solution. But before I move forward, actually what happens, this is the above equations. are as per my notation of SK. But uh, in power system textbooks, SK is different. So how it is different, let me just explain it. Uh, actually, I am responsible for this confusion, so I'll apologize right away. So SK according to me power drawn at bus k so or you can also say power output at bus k so this is this is my uh, interpretation of what is sk so whereas 
एस के अकॉर्डिंग टू सम टेक्स्ट बुक्स इज नथिंग बट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू कंफ्यूज विद अ माइनस साइन सो आई जस्ट पुट एन एरो इट इज पावर इंजेक्टेड एट बस के एंड देन पावर इनपुट एट बस के सो वी शुड बी स्लाइटली केयरफुल अबाउट दिस सो इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो फॉरगेट अबाउट माई नोटेशन जस्ट टू फॉलो स्टैंडर्ड टेक्सट बुक नोटेशन आई जस्ट कॉपी दीज टू इक्वेशंस एंड देन आई जस्ट सिंपली रिवर्स दिस साइन ऑफ पी एंड क्यू so what happens is this minus sign will be deleted and then there will be a new minus sign coming here so just that's what you should be careful about uh, anyway while while solving a example problem you will completely understand what what i am trying to do here so it's not be not be a problem so let's take up an example problem now so i'll go to a fresh page now what i'll do is go back to one of the previous examples and then i'll just make a slight modification and suddenly you will realize that uh, there is a problem in solving this so i'm just taking another example here so this is so maybe problem 2 solve for v2 and v3 in the following so in this case what i'll do is i'll just instead of a load i'll keep a generator so let me keep a generator here so here i am generating so whenever i am generating i know what is the magnitude of the voltage so let's say the magnitude of v3 is 0.98 per unit because there is a facility to control the excitation system of the generator by increasing or decreasing the excitation system i can control the voltage set point i can generate whatever voltage i want i can generate uh, 1.05 per unit or 1.03 per unit or whatever or 0.98 per unit so it is under my control depending on the excitation level of the generator i can control the voltage magnitude now delta 3 which is the angle this is still unknown i cannot control it as of now and i can control p3 so let's say p3 is 0.25 per unit so i am generating 25% of the power at this particular rated power at this particular bus so let me delete this one now look at the question solve for v2 and v3 in the following now what is there to solve v3 v3 i already know v3 is 0.98 but that is only the partial information of v3 i only know the magnitude of v3 but i don't know the angle of v3 so states or state variables so total state variables are there is a three bus system so 3 into 2 that is six state variables what are the six state variables v1 delta 1 v2 delta 2 and v3 delta 3 these are six state variables so out of the six state variables v1 is known delta 1 is known because uh, you will have to have one of the deltas defined so that is called a slack bus because with reference to this angle i measure the all other angles and v1 so typically any generator bus you will consider it as a slack bus now coming to v2 so v2 is a load bus so i don't know what is v2 i don't know what is delta 2 coming to v3 i know the magnitude of v3 but i don't know the delta 3 also look at the powers 
so i know p3 but q3 i don't know so here i know p3 p2 and q2 because that is the load that is given so p2 q2 i know now p1 q1 i don't care actually because we, we are because these two these states are already known so i don't even write those equations i'll write equations for only these two now what happens under this scenario earlier there's a load bus and a load bus so if you go back to part 2 of this videos so problem in part 2 of gossidel video and then problem we are solving in part 3 video so how it is different so the different is p2 there are one slack bus and then two load buses here one slack bus one generator bus and then one load bus so when you have this there will be a problem so i let me explain that so i i go back to that uh, solution of the previous uh, this thing so i had written these two equations so let me copy these two equations in fact why to confuse you by going comparing with all that let me just let me just redo all these things so apply gauss seidel so and in the process of applying gauss seidel what i will do is i will take this equation this is what i was mentioning right so i'll take this equation this part i'll just delete it so i'll write equation for v2 and i'll write equation for v3 so first let me write equation for v2 so k equal to 2 so 1 by v y22 okay and here minus sk star so i'll just uh, i'll just take care of uh, defining exactly what is you know pk and qk so i'll just write pk minus jqk so again don't confuse with this minus and then there is a vk star and then my i'm just trying to be consistent with the textbook notation so that's why so i'll just make this also as plus earlier derivation was my notation and this plus sign will be the textbook notation of sk so here i not that means i not equal to 2 so i equal to 1 so i'll get a term y 1 1 sorry k equal to 2 right y 2 1 v 1 minus y 2 3 v 3 that's it so this is the equation i get for v 2 now what is the equation i'll get for v 3 so 1 by y 3 3 here i'll get so by the way, here it will be p2 minus jq2 p2 q2 and here also not vk because k equal to 2 i'll get 2 here so here i'll get p3 minus j q3 and then here i'll get v3 conjugate and then minus y 31 v1 minus y 32 v2 so this is the equation that we get for v3 now when i this is gauss seidel for v2 and v3 when i try to implement this 
so this is a complex member this is a complex member these are all complex members by the way they're all complex members from going here to here the problem is q3 is unknown so if you look at this point there is a generator at q3 now there is a generator at bus 3 so you don't know what is q3 so how to know we will have to make a patch up here so that is we need an equation for what is q3 here and and helpfully just now we had derived uh, that also if i go down so this one will help me in uh, writing what is q3 so from this so i'll just write it here so let me just get this equation I think maybe this equation I'll get it. So from this, from this I'll write what is Q3 equal to minus Y31 V1. No, oh, by the way, I forgot to keep the summation. So here also there will be a summation with a minus sign. Or let me just do delete all this. So so here I get minus y three one v one v three sine of theta three one plus delta 1 minus delta 3. So this is one term. Another term I will get minus y32 v2 v3 sine of delta 3 2 plus delta 2 minus delta 3. And then I will get one more equation y33 v3 v3. These are all magnitudes. So sine of theta 3 3 plus delta 3 minus delta 3. So of course these two will cancel out each other and then sine of delta 3 3 will be there. So this equation if I get this I will have to insert in between these two. So So only then the code will work. So this equation I'll have to insert between these two. So so then this is equation one, equation two, equation three. I will iterate and then the gauss seidel solution I will be able to get it. So if you are confused, take some time, be cool, look at it once again. So the problem comes wherever there is a generator bus. So I will I'll right away solve this right now. So let me go to my MATLAB interface. So I will create a new file. And let's try to solve the problem that, that we have now. I'll begin by defining my Y bus. So already Y bus is, has been defined before. So so this is my Y bus. So y11, y12, y13 and so on. So let me write. So minus j10, j10. So minus 10i, 10i, 0. This is first row. 
So instead of y bus, I'll just write it yb. J10, J minus 50, okay. So 10i minus 59. 5i. This is second row. 0, 5i minus 5i. So let me run this. So here you can see on the right uh, the y bus has been defined. Next. This is given data. So it is also given that V1 equal to 1. It is also given that S2 equal to. Now is the important point. So here, so 0 0.6 minus 0.2i this is the power output at bus 2 now if I put a minus sign this is the power injected at bus 2 so that is what is the thing that we should be careful about if I put a minus sign that means I am injecting that much power so at bus 2 ok S2 I have defined Now, here what is P3? So P3, in fact, instead of defining S2, I will write P2 equal to minus 6 and then uh, Q2 equal to plus, minus or minus, so because it is a capacitive power. So this is how and P3 power injected at bus 3 I am sorry I should not look at this figure I should be looking at this figure so 0.25 per unit so it is injected so it is plus 0 0.25 now Q3 is unknown actually so we will we'll have to solve it by our equation this is a given data Now let me write y2, v2. So this expression I will write it here. So before that initial guess. So v2 equal to 1, v3 equal to 1. This is my initial guess. In fact the magnitude of v3 has been given to us. That is 0 0.98 in the, in the question. So I will take this as 0 0.98. Next is. I will write this V2. So what is V2? So for M equal to 1 to 5. So I am running 5 iterations. So here I will solve for V2. So 1 by Y2 to 2 comma 2. Now this is a complex number. So multiplied by P2 minus JQ2. So here, P2 minus Q2. So for Q2 already J is there. So let me remove that. I will just put it here. Q2 into I divided by V2 conjugate. So V conjugate of v2 so this part i have done so minus y21 v1 minus y bus of 2 comma 1 into v1 minus y23 v3 y bus of 2 comma 3 into v3 so this this expression will give me the value of v2 So anyway, it is becoming big. 
So let me write value of V3. So here if you see V3 1 by Y3 3. So Y bus of 3 comma 3. Y is a matrix so I am taking that element. Then P3 minus JQ3. So P3 minus Q3 into I. Then conjugate of V3 that is also there. Then Y bus 3 1 into V1. Then Y bus 3 2 into V2. That's it. So but now if I run the problem will come because Q3 variable is not defined. So I will just show that to you. If I, if I execute this, so here you are getting error Q3 undefined. So how to define Q3? So I cannot give it in the input data because I don't know what is Q3. So here I will write Q3 equal to. So before I go to this equation, I will write Q3 equal to. And for Q3, this is my equation. Now Y31 is actually, these are all absolute values. So So minus of y31 v1 v3 in fact let me to simplify the coding let me do some hard coding here so what is y bus so I, I go here and I will get my y bus Let me copy this Y bus. So from this I'll get y31 equal to 0. So this is just magnitudes, not the this one. So y32, third row, second column is 5. That is this one. Then this one, y33 is also equal to 5. Now what is theta31? So anyway, since y31 is 0, this entire term will be 0. So I don't worry about this. Then look at the second term, theta32. Theta32. So third row, second element plus j. So therefore, the angle will be pi by 2, 90 degrees. What is theta33? Minus j. So the angle will be minus pi by 2. So the, here it will be minus pi by 2. Okay, so now I have uh, these variables. Now what is V1, V2, V3? So we know that V3 magnitude is 0.98 already. So all the time I will use 0.98 in this place. V2 is unknown, so I will use absolute value of V2. And V1 is anyway known, that is 1. So let me come to this. In fact, I, I, I need only these two terms. The first term will not come because of this 0. Third row, first element is 0. So I will just use this thing. So y32 that is 5. So I will get minus 5. Then v2 v3. So into absolute value of v2 into v3 is 0 0.98. Then sine into sine of theta32 that is pi by 2 plus theta2 minus uh, plus now here delta 2 how do we get delta 2 that is angle of v2 minus delta 3 so minus angle of v3 so this this is one one term and I have another term. So anyway, these two will cancel out each other. So and then sine of minus pi by 2. Sine 90 degrees is uh, 
1 so sine of minus pi by 2 will be minus 1 so this will become plus so y33 into v3 square so 5 into v3 square so is the is what is that term so let me write that plus 5 into 0 0.98 square so finally i am i have calculated the value of q3 so just take some time and then look at this so now let me execute this and then see what happens so i am getting some uh, solution so so v2 let me just do the display of it display v2 v3 i'll display it as a and then the iteration number first i'll display the iteration number then i'll display the v2 v3 values and then i'll just display an empty line this part is just printing of output so let's do it for 10 iterations so so here is what is the solution so after first it so this is the y bus after first iteration i got this second third so as you move forward so after 10th iteration you are able to see this is my v2 and this is my v3 so i'll have to validate this result but this is how we can we can calculate the uh, the solution so i'll try to do one more video on uh, gauss seidel method with another example problem but then uh, let's let's do it in the next video you can practice this you can just review what i have done in this video try to try to see the reason why we need to introduce this q3 in between